Hey guys, Josh here today. We are here to review the 2016 Bahrain Grand Prix, the second round then of the season. And boy, was this a good one. Definitely, Formula 1 this year is going to be very, very exciting. The tyre strategies once again playing a major part in this race and uh, varying strategies from many of the drivers and also a bit of drama as well in the opening laps and indeed on the formation lap as well. But Let's start off then at the top then. It was Nico Rosberg taking his fifth straight victory uh, in Formula 1 and his second of the season. Of course, it's two out of two for the German. He's got a 17-point lead in the Drivers' Championship and it's really been a perfect start for Nico Rosberg. I mean... OK, yes, he, he massively benefited from, uh, you know, Hamilton's uh, crash with Bottas at the start um, in uh, Bahrain, of course, and then in Australia. He was very lucky with Hamilton being kind of knocked down the order at the start and Vettel and Ferrari going the wrong way on the strategy. But at the end of the day, Rosberg's been there and he's picked up those wins when it's mattered. And it's really, really helped him in terms of a title charge. He does look pretty, pretty solid. And I, I still think Hamilton will win the championship. But I think this early momentum could really help Nico Rosberg. And uh, just maybe he could, uh, you know, win the championship this year. But We'll have to wait and see. Nothing too much to say really about his race. Very, very quiet. I never really thought Raikkonen could beat him, but uh, great job on Kimi Raikkonen. Second place. When Vettel did the race on the formation lap, Raikkonen definitely, you know, stood up and uh, really led the Ferrari charge. Clearly had the pace to live with the Mercedes in terms of, you know, keeping Hamilton at bay. Hamilton, of course, did have a broken car, and that's why he finished 20 seconds off Kimi Raikkonen. Hamilton never really able to challenge uh, Kimi Raikkonen. Uh, which wasn't really surprising if you, if you kind of looked at the damage to Hamilton's car after the race. It was kind of a bit of a miracle really that he did finish and uh, finish in third he did. So I think in terms of a race where you have major contact at, uh, at turn one and, uh, you know, if, if you come away with uh, 15 points, it, it's, it's a pretty good race really. So I think Hamilton should be pretty pleased with that. He seemed a bit down after the race, of course, which he would be. But uh, although he has lost 10 points to his teammate, you know, if you're going to have a bad day like this, at least you're going to come out on, on top with 15 points. But it's been a frustrating, you know, season for Hamilton so far, particularly in the races. Of course, he's got two pole positions, but now he's got a second and a third and has lost, uh, you know, the win to Nicky Rosberg two, uh, you know, rounds in a row now. So, He's really going to be fighting back in China, of course, but that's a track he doesn't always do very well at, and uh, it's very much Nicky Rosberg track, so it should be very, very interesting seeing how the Rosberg-Hamilton dynamic continues um, for the remaining 19 rounds, and hopefully we will get a really, really good title battle. But yeah, good job from Hamilton, and good job from Mercedes just to uh, get him to the end, uh, and uh, great job from Kimi Raikkonen as well. Good job as well from Danny Ricciardo, once again finishing fourth. He's now third in the driver's standing. Super soft, soft, soft and a medium tie run at the end of the race. I'm guessing they went on the mediums at the end because they weren't really under pressure from anyone and they didn't really need to pressure anyone in front. So yeah, pretty lonely race really for Danny Ricciardo after getting contact and breaking part of his front wing on the opening lap. Overall, you know, a really, really good race for Danny Ricciardo. Once again, showing that that Red Bull is pretty clearly the third fastest car, I would definitely say, but surprisingly the fourth fastest car in the race, not down to luck like it arguably was in Australia, um, Grosjean in the house. They, they definitely look to have the fourth quickest car, you know, ahead of the likes of Toro Rosso, Williams, McLaren, Renault, Sauber and Manor, and of course Force India as well. So it's pretty incredible that Haas have, uh, you know, just come straight out of the box with the fourth fastest car. And to be honest, you know, it, well, of course he was ahead of Danny Fiat and... Uh, you know, only uh, 16 seconds off Danny Ricardo, so certainly, uh, you know, uh, races down the line that might be uh, more suited to that Haas. You know, we could definitely possibly even say them, say them on the podium. I would definitely say it's not out of the question, but we will get Roman Grosjean on the podium, um, you know, by the time the season is out. And, uh, well, I'd say that's not really a wild prediction at all. That's, that's a pretty solid prediction, and it's one I'm going to make right now. I do think Roman Grosjean will be on the podium before the season rounds out. Max Verstappen was sixth and rather quiet race for the Toro Rosso driver compared to his outburst in Australia. Couldn't quite catch Grosjean at the end, uh, despite Verstappen being on the super soft, but really he just didn't have enough time. Good strategy as well from Toro Rosso. They really did, uh, you know, have a much, much better race uh, on the side of Max Verstappen compared to, uh, which was a bit of a, a disaster really in Australia. Much, much better race for Toro Rosso. Danny Fiat, great drive from him to come from 15th to 7th. 
Um, and really, I don't think he could have got any further than that. Was very, very uh, did very, very well to get Massa right on the final laps. And really, really good driving as well. I thought from Danny Fiat, I mean, he really did impress me in the second half of the race. Really did pull some really, really good moves with some very nice late braking, and uh, you know, very much needed this result because. Of course, he didn't even start in Australia, had a poor qualifying, so the, the pressure's on um, with Verstappen, you know, Verstappen still beat him in the race, though, so I think Danny Fiat very, very much still under the microscope, and is going to be under a lot of pressure this year, but uh, if he continues to put in more kind of, uh, you know, performances like he did in the second half of this race, and there's no reason why Danny Fiat has anything to worry about, but, you know, we'll see over these next few races how Fiat progresses. Felipe Massa then was 8th ahead of teammate Valtteri Bottas, 8th and 9th for the Williams is very, very disappointing, considering they were about 2nd and 3rd after the opening lap. Bottas, of course, having that contact with Lewis Hamilton, and you guys actually thought that uh, the penalty was not deserved for Valtteri Bottas, it was very, very close in the poll I ran on Twitter, but uh, most people believing for that penalty was not very just for Bottas, but... Ultimately, Williams threw it away, really, on the strategy. Um, a two-stopper for Massa was not the way to go, and ultimately lost him seventh place to Danny Fiat. If they'd have got the strategy better, sixth or definitely seventh would have been there for the taking, but Massa did not capitalise on it due to a poor strategy. I mean, I'm not blaming Massa, because really there wasn't much he could do. I mean, they went for a two-stopper, super soft, medium, medium. And yes, okay, that it didn't look like they had many sets of. Uh, I'm not sure if they even had a, a fresh set of soft tyres left or super softs, but uh, you know, for whatever reason, it just did not go Williams' way, and uh, very much a poor race for them, eighth and ninth. And really, their race pace was pretty dreadful. I mean, especially Cousins, considering that they were had to go on the medium tyres um, for most of the race, Massa did. So he was mainly just getting overtaken pretty much every single lap by the likes of the Haas and the Toro Rosso. So not a very good day for Williams. Uh, at a track that usually should suit Williams, so yeah, I think this basically confirms they are going to be the fifth or sixth fastest car this year, and have definitely slipped behind Red Bull, and maybe even Haas and Toroso as well. But in 10th place though, my driver of the day, Stoffel van Dorn in the McLaren, picking up a point on his debut. What a fantastic drive from him. Super soft, 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 super soft tyre strategy from him. What a great job as well from van Dorn. And, uh, you know, great to see him scoring McLaren's first points of this season. And for van Dorn to get a point on his F1 debut, it's very, very important. And we'll probably see Fernando Alonso back in for China. Um, but there are still a few rumours that he might not be fit and Van Dorn might be in for China. But it's safe to say that that McLaren will be in safe hands. Van Dorn definitely proved he has what it takes to really take up where Fernando left off and really take it to Jensen Button. He outqualified him. And although Button was ahead at the start, for all we know, you know, Van Dorn could have beaten Button in the race. It was a shame Button did retire because I think we would have seen an interesting battle between the two McLarens. But considering this is his first weekend... It's, it's very, very impressive. So, great job from Van Dorn. The McLaren actually looks like a decent race car. Possibly, I'd say, six fastest car. I mean, it wasn't even that far off the Williams, to be honest. So, good job from McLaren. I think they have a much better car and power unit this year. But is it really going to be enough for Alonso to stick around? I think he will for 2017. And will it be enough, really, for McLaren? Is it enough progress, really, from McLaren to really suggest they could be world champions in, say, a couple of years? I'm not quite sure. But nevertheless, for this race, great job from Van Dorn. He's just my driver of the day. Quite a few of us as well. Grosjean and the guy who finished in 13th. But I'll come on to him a bit later. Kevin Magnussen, then, was 11th. Was strangely quiet race, really, for him. I mean... We saw him uh, having quite a few battles with the man with the Force India with the Sauber as well at the end, managing to get past Ericsson. Uh, yeah, Magnussen really did struggle. He struggled for straight line speed. That Renault doesn't actually seem as fast as the Tag Hoyer, which is weird. I I'm not sure if that is true or not. But certainly the way the Renault was set up, it certainly didn't have the best straight line speed. So Magnussen did get stuck behind, I think it was uh, Perez and uh, Verline, I think, as well. So... Uh, Magnussen really, really did struggle, but uh, 11th place, not too bad, but once again, not points. It's the second week in a row, Renault have finished 11th. Marcus Ericsson, 12th. You know, I think, you know, Ericsson did a good job in this race, I would say. I mean, he did a two-stopper, the same as uh, Philippe Massa, I believe, though, the only guys to do a two-stopper, and indeed they were. 
and uh, Ericsson made it work, I think, better than Massa in 12th place. is pretty good, actually, ahead of both Force Indias, ahead of his teammate, ahead of Verline and Harry Anto as well. So, a good job from Ericsson. I think he's really come into his own recently and has established himself as a bit of a team leader, really, at that Sauber team. And I think he's doing a, you know, a, a, a quiet kind of uh, fairly you know solid job really and he's a solid midfield driver and uh, has very much shaken off that pay driver tag for me although I think he's still yet to convince most people. Pascal Verlein in at the manor then was 13th great great job for him to really outperform that car I mean the manor looks very very good in the race and uh, is arguably ahead of the Sauber and uh, this time actually beat both the Force Indies as well but I'll come on to that a little bit later why it's not really a fair, you know, a comparison really. But anyway, at the end of the day, in this race, he beat Nasser Hulkenberg Press and Harry Anto. So it's just good to see Manor in the mix and Manor beating people, you know. It, it, it's just good to see. Pascal Berlin, star of the future. Manor are very much a team to watch for the future as well. Felipe Nasser then was 14th, he managed to overtake uh, Perez right, I think about on the last lap, and managed to hold off the advancing Hulkenberg, who pitted for a set of super softs very late on. Great job though from, you know, Pascal Verlaine, but not so much really from Felipe Nasser, I mean, he really did struggle for breaks, we know he struggles for breaks, Bahrain's very, very, uh, you know, break limiting really, and uh, can be very, very tough on breaks, so... Yeah, tough race though for Felipe Nasa, but uh, still did a, a pretty decent job, but yet again behind his teammate Marcus Eriksson. Hulkenberg and Perez then 15th and 16th, Hulkenberg overtaking Perez on the final lap of the race. Uh, but awful day for Force India. They really ruined their race really on lap one and in the opening laps. Um, just got involved in uh, contact and that really uh, just set them off along the wrong path. Didn't go the right way on strategy either and just ate up their tyres in a very un Force India like way. And overall just struggled for race pace. Uh, so yeah, abysmal race for Force India. They had the second slowest race car or arguably even the slowest race car today. Rio Harianto then was 17th, very, very quiet race for him. He was some way off the back of Perez and way off his teammate. Not great pace from Rio Harianto, it's a bit of a shame really to say, but uh, simply this is going to be what you're going to have to come to expect really from Rio Harianto in my opinion. Not a good day for him, but... Uh, you know, he, he got to the end at least, I guess. That's positive, of course, his first finish in Formula 1. Carlos Sainz uh, got taken out, basically, by Sergio Perez. Um, he fell right to the back and then uh, had a um, jack problem as well at the rear jack at one of the pit stops. And then just further problems for him meant he had to retire. Awful, awful day for Carlos Sainz, a day to forget for him. But, you know, even if he hadn't retired, he wouldn't have uh, fared any better. He'd have still been at 16th or 17th or 18 possibly, uh, Esteban Gutierrez, yeah, great, great race for him, to be honest, I think he did another really, really solid race, he was, uh, like Australia, kind of uh, behind Grosjean, but still on for points, and uh, sadly, for the second round of running, mechanical issues end his charge, uh, Jensen Button as well, his charge was ended by mechanical issues, as was Vettel and Palmer as well, before the start was taken. Bit of a shame we did not see Sebastian Vettel in the race. Uh, maybe he could have challenged the two Mercedes down into Turn 1. And maybe, he, you know, I guess him not being there probably created the incident really at Turn 1. Because there was a huge void that Bottas just went into. I mean, it was a fantastic start as well from the Williams. It was a shame that they couldn't uh, capitalise on that. Even when they were running 2nd and 3rd to finish 8th and ninth. So, kind of conclusions from today. Another wasted opportunity from Williams, but clearly they just don't have the race pace of their rivals. Red Bull are definitely the third quickest car in Formula 1 at the moment, and Haas are definitely the fourth quickest car, which is just incredible to say. Grosjean is doing a great job as well. We now know Manor are fully within the field, especially with a great driver in Verline. They can, you know, they're not right at the back, and they can fight within the midfield. This is an off day for Force India, but they will be back. This is not their true pace. Lap 1 really, really cost them. And a disappointing day for Sebastian Vettel. In terms of a championship charge, it's looking pretty difficult. Although it's only early stages, it looks like a two-horse race already between Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton. But it's Rosberg who leads then with 17 points as the field heads to China for round 3 of the 2016 season. You guys can leave your race rating and driver of the day down in the comment section below. But until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'll see you guys in China. It should be an epic race with high tyre wear. And overall, the track's really, really good for overtaking. So, see you guys in China. It should be a good race. Goodbye.